Here's a Husqvarna 254. The problem with this saw is that when you store it, it leaks all of its bar oil on the side here. So I'm going to have to take the chain and bar off first, and I'm going to fill it up with oil and leave it sit to see exactly where it's coming out of. To remove the bar and chain, just simply remove the two nuts here. To really find out what's going on, sometimes you have to remove the clutch, get all the dirt out here, out of here, so that you can see better exactly where the oil's coming from. I think at this point, the best thing to do for me is to remove the clutch, then I'll see better under here where the oil's coming from. So I'm going to take the top cover off here by removing the three flat screws on the top cover. Next I'm going to take the plug off to insert a nylon rope to stop the motor from turning over when I remove the clutch. So now you can feel the piston with this small screwdriver. When it's all the way down on its way up, your screwdriver is going to be right at the bottom. Then insert your rope in there as much as you can. Or if you have a piston stop, a metal piston stop, you can use that too. Now you're going to need a 15 millimeter wrench and it's reverse thread, meaning you're going to turn clockwise to remove it. Now when you remove the clutch, make sure you make a note of where everything is so that you put it back in the exact same order. Now the clutch drum is going to come off and then you've got your rim sprocket and then the needle bearing and that just goes in the center here. And this was like that, so I'm just going to keep that in the same order. Now I'm just going to clean this off so that it's really clean. And then when I put the oil, it's going to be a lot easier to see where it's coming out of. So I've got it flipped over. I'm going to put a bit of bar oil in there. So I got another piece of cardboard that was in full of oil so that I would see exactly what's going on. And so far, I don't really see anything coming out. But I'm going to leave it here for a while, then come back and see what's going on. It's been sitting for approximately four hours and as you can see there there's a puddle of oil on the side of the oil cap if you look on the side of the bar and the clutch it's perfectly dry so the oil is coming from that side and you can see the oil over here I'm gonna check one basic thing actually I can see that the oil ran down the cap all the way down Hopefully that's all that's wrong with it. So I'm going to take the cap off and uh, see if there's an o-ring that goes there. Maybe it's just a stupid little thing like that. When it was sitting uh, before, it did look like it was coming out of the side of the chain when the bar was on. But at this point here, we get a clear picture. So here's a closer look. There is an O-ring right here where my thumb is. And what I have here is a cap from a Husqvarna 50. And it fits on there. So I'm going to try that and let it sit again for a while and see what happens. It seems to me that this cap here goes on a bit tighter on the edges. So I think the O-ring is all that's wrong with the other cap but in the meantime I just want to leave it sit with that one and see what happens so I'll check it back uh, tonight or tomorrow the saw is sitting here for 24 hours after putting the other oil cap on and there's no oil leaking at all so more than likely it was just the o-ring here you could replace the o-ring but you have to make sure it's a proper material Usually it's a Viton rubber or nitrile. 
Anyways, it kind of looks like I took the clutch and everything off for nothing. But actually, I don't view it that way because now I'm sure there's no oil leaking out of any of these areas here. So it kind of eliminates the doubt for that. And as you can see, she's nice and dry. So sometimes the repair is just something simple like this. And you can save yourself a lot of money. So now I'm going to put it back together. I'm just going to start by putting the clutch back on. First of all, just put the roller bearing on. And I'm going to put the rim sprocket back on. And I believe it was on this side. It's better if you put it back in in the same side that you took it out because of the wear grooves on the sprocket. And just insert it on there. You can put a bit of grease inside the roller bearing if you want. Don't put too much because the grease can come out and get on the clutch and make it slip. If the drum is greasy, just clean it up with a rag. Just wipe the inside of the drum. Look at all the black stuff that came off. Next, reinstall the clutch by spinning counterclockwise because it's reverse thread. Now before I tighten up the clutch, I'm going to pull out some of the recoil rope. So I've wrapped the rope on the back of the handle here so it doesn't go back in. And once I tighten up the clutch, I'm going to release it. Now insert the rope in your cylinder. This is to lock the engine up. Now just gently let the rope go back in the recoil as you tighten up. The reason for doing this is so that you don't put all the pressure inside the mechanism of the recoil. And now tighten up your clutch real good. When she's tight, just pull the rope out. And your clutch is installed. Next, we'll install the chain. You want to make sure that the chain is in the grooves of the rim sprocket on the clutch drum as you see in there. Next, insert the bar over here. Next, you want to make sure the bar goes in the adjustment pin here. This is what it's supposed to look like. Now down here, we have an adjustment screw for the oil. You can give it more oil or less. So what I'm going to do is check to see the setting. So it was at three quarters out. And I'll put it back at three quarters out. And I believe the more you unscrew it, the more oil goes to the bar. If you turn it in, the less oil goes in. So once I get it back together, I'll try it out and see how much oil is getting onto the chain. Next, insert a chain brake back on. And there's two clips here that go into the back. And it's going to go on to these studs here. And now just tighten up your bar. If you wanted to tighten up the chain, what you would do is tighten up this little screw down here. If you wanted to loosen the chain, you would loosen the screw. Do this while the two nuts here are partially loose. Next, we're going to install the spark plug. It's an NGK BPMR 7A or Champion CJ7Y. The last thing to put on is the cover. And there's one last screw on this side. So as you can see, sometimes it can be a quick fix like this, very cheap to repair. I wasn't expecting that in this case. I thought for sure there's got to be oil coming out on the side of the clutch because of what the guy was telling me. So there you go. Anyways, we'll see you in my next videos.